So many people have that one film that no matter how hard they try and understand, something about it just falls right out of the range of our understanding, like Titanic and the door fitting both of the ill-fated lovers, or figuring out when head actor DiCaprio is dreaming in the film Inception. It seems that teen heartthrobs just seem to confuse me, and young Jake Gyllenhaal's performance in Donnie Darko is no exception. Is it fate, or did poor Donnie screw up time itself? Welcome to Cutting Edge, a podcast where we cut deep into our favorite thrillers to talk about what truly lies within. I'm your host, and today is all about the intricacies of Donnie Darko and what this film is really trying to say. Donnie Darko follows a titular character as he begins to experience strange things in his hometown. Plagued by sleepwalking and mental illness, Donnie discovers he has a set amount of time before the end of the world. According to Frank, Donnie's new friend who only he can see. Guided by this unsettling vision, Donnie sets out to fix what exactly went wrong the night he essentially ruined time itself, a plane engine landing in his room with his family in the house. Frank helps Donnie to set off a chain of events leading up to the alleged end of the world, doing things like flooding the school and destroying a life coach's home to discover the spoils within. Speaking of spoilers, if you care about them, I hate to break it to you, but this film is older than me and therefore is past spoiler age. Donnie ends up fulfilling this vision that Frank gave him by sleeping in his room on October 31st and the engine lands on him, resetting time and righting the invisible wrongs. This film poses an excellent set of questions to many of its fans and viewers, like why did Donnie have to die? Did God want him to die? Or was it fate that ordered it? And is there really time travel? Regarding Donnie dying, yes, he did have to go. This film talks about universes and branching off into tangents. Donnie not dying the first time around created this unstable environment destined for destruction since the purpose was not fulfilled. Frank set off the chain of events to right that wrong and stabilize the primary universe. Donnie is, in a very screwed up sense, the chosen one. He alone can fix the mess made by the world. It's fated that he had to die from the very beginning. Fate has a big pin in the board of this film, so much stuff chalks right up to it. Donnie doing everything is guided by fate in the form of a rabbit himself and his acquaintances. The premise of time travel in this film manipulates the people within to do a specific job to push that primary objective in subtle but useful ways, and they're not even aware of it. The dead also have a major influence to how Donnie navigates his mission, mainly in the form of his girlfriend Gretchen, when she passes away. Sometimes people need God to explain something they themselves cannot. For example, the Tangent Universe is a blip in the fate of this world, so Donnie is chosen by God to restore balance. This conversation with a science teacher named Monotov preaches act of God comparisons when discussing time travel portals opening in their town. Donnie subtly references the predestined paths the liquid tunnels take from his chest, and the pair debate the concept of free will and determinism. Monotov highlights that paradox that if someone were to see their destiny, they could change it, causing Donnie to reference God's channel. God's channel is the wormhole that opens above Donnie's home with the airplane engine, which is a very interesting comparison between fate and drawing that into a religious sense. Did God really plant this for Donnie to die, or was it just circumventing fate? Regarding this film's discussion of tangent universes and time travel, there is a concept of time travel in this film, but the way that it works is a bit hard to explain. I highly encourage you to check out more of this information beyond what I provide. I will be linking that below. This film has a book titled along with it called The Philosophy of Time Travel. It is written by a character that is also in this film named Roberta Sparrow. Roberta Sparrow was what the book calls a life receiver, a person who is in charge of fixing whatever wormholes the universe provides and righting those wrongs. Life receivers tend to have a lot of mental illness and a lot of issues that come with being the chosen one. She survives her ordeal through an unnamed event, but is left very scarred and seemingly crazy. They call her Grandma Death because of her decrepit appearance and her erratic behavior. Donnie is also seen as being the life receiver because he starts dealing with sleepwalking and mental illness and it's highly suspected that through this whole film he's already dealing with paranoid schizophrenia. That's something often not discussed in films because most times people who are schizophrenic in these movies are seen as the villain and not the hero, which is one reason why I love this movie so much. Donnie isn't a villain, he never was. He's just a misguided hero 
with a lot of questionable morals because he's a teenager and this is not the two this is not 2020. Donnie's job as the life receiver means that he has to take the artifact and put it back in its correct place in order for time to fix itself. The artifact is generally speaking any item that will open the conduit which is the wormhole and that wormhole will spit out the artifact and it has to be interacted with properly for it to actually continue working. If not, the artifact will open the tangent universe, which is where everything essentially, pardon my French, goes to shit. The tangent universe basically is where everything goes wrong and Donnie has to fix that. And Donnie has to fix that by dying, which is a very interesting way of tying that concept of fate and the concept of a religious experience and tying it back into science and making sure that it all packages nicely rather than just being a messy, loopholed nightmare of a movie. Donnie Darko is an incredibly interesting film that utilizes an unstable teenager and makes him the hero of a tragic story. It's unsettling, sometimes comedic, but just oh so sad. I see this film as being a great way to explain fate and how our lives affect everything in a way that feels tangible and more respectful of ideals. Taking these concepts of science and religion and tying it back into something that doesn't tie down to another culture that isn't ours. I recommend watching this film once, twice, many times. It'll feel like a time loop, but at the same time, isn't that kind of the point? Thank you so much for digging into this film with me. I'll be linking my source for all my information in the video description below. Don't forget your tickets for next week's topic, Alien and the Traversal of Gender Roles in the 80s.